Ooh, what is up guys and welcome to our VPL Week 4 Battle versus Matt and Josh or of course the Quebec City Basics versus the Slateport Vale. Now, we've seen these po players before, I was gonna say Pokemon before, we've seen these players before, we've definitely seen the Pokemon before too, clearly. And um, Matt and Josh are one of those players that I do believe have been both have a bit of an unlucky streak, being that I actually lost a lot, even though they play really, really, really well. And they're definitely both very, very balanced players, definitely are able to deal with defensive plays and offensive plays really, really well. So seeing them going up against one another definitely was a treat. And this game itself was really, really, really good. I definitely feel that this game deserves a post-narration because the quality of the game it actually is. And it's not often I say that, I definitely believe that I myself play the best games ever, but when I see people play better than me, I get kind of jealous. <laughs> I won't deny that. So with that said, as you guys can see on the screen here, we have Matt's team with Volcanion, Excadrill, Howlucha, Mega Garchomp, Weezing, and Kicklion is back, which is awesome, Kicklion is awesome, always. And Josh here is bringing, of course, Seismic Toad, Beweer, Latios, Shaming, Electabuzz, and Need Queen. Now here's the thing. Um, offensively, Matt is definitely the stronger between these two just by matchup alone, but Josh has successfully brought a check defensively for every matchup, which is quite incredible. There are very few things that Josh can't do versus this offensive matchup. And of course, Volcano is hard war, but of course, Latios. And of course, even to some extent, Seismetodes. It's very exciting keeping that in mind. Other than that, we think could be an issue. Definitely not the easiest thing to KO. He, uh, Josh really needs to preserve his Latios uh, to be able to, or Latias, to be able to actually check it properly. And of course, Shaman is also a big win condition because it does deal with extra drill somewhat well. So, with all this said, let's of course just go into the match. So, from the get-go here, we are going to see actually Josh leading off with, of course, Seismitoad, which is a good defensive Pokemon to lead off with for this matchup, as, uh, of course, Matt brings on the Volcanion. Now, from the get-go here, Josh will actually go for a knockoff over, actually, Earthquake, which is not a bad thing, actually, because it knocks off, actually, Assault Vest, which would have been very, very useful for, of course, Volcanion, as Volcanion actually goes for an Hidden Power Grass. Now, with that knowledge, and, of course, with Rindobel reduced, and actually able to survive without, I should say, any issues whatsoever, uh, Josh can take the opportunity going into Latios, or, I mean, Latias, because with now Hidden Power Grass reveal, it will mean that he doesn't have any super effective move to deal with, of course, Ursa or the Latias. As he'll go for another Hidden Power Grass, and it won't do anything. So, with that said, um, Josh will actually do a very, very good play, feeling that Kecleon could come in, and, of course, have him pursued naturally, and, of course, the Protein Mine could very, very well be denting, of course, the Latias, He's actually going to pull a double switch, go into, of course, his Beware, which definitely defensively can check a possible Kecleon switch in, which, of course, will happen with, of course, Kecleon coming in. And um, Matt is now able to, or forced to do a defensive play, and this is exactly what he does, go directly to Big Ben, being, of course, Garchomp, as Beware or Josh will go for a superpower. And this will do so much damage. I mean, it does so much, and we know it's leftovers, or I know it's a leftover set, so it's not bad. It had been bad, or probably would have KO'd, actually. So that's very, very, very exciting. So, with that said, though, um, he's definitely not feeling he could stay in here. Urku would definitely dent to beware, and that would be quite unfortunate. With shame in mind, it's a good switch in towards, of course, a job, even if it has a fire blast or anything like that. So, he's actually gonna, of course, Mega Evolve. The Mega Garchomp is here. It is not as intimidating as people make it out to be, though it is fairly strong. So it has its reasons for its rep, but it is slower. As he'll go back to for a substitute, so a very, very good play on Matt's side, feeling that it's very, very likely he would switch out. So you get a free chance here to go for an offensive move. He goes for Fire Fang, he does miss the Fire Fang, which is very unfortunate, since, of course, he will be able to, of course, break the sub with a Giga Drain. Should be said, though, that Josh actually optimized Giga Drain over Seed Flare, which is probably a good and a bad thing, but Seed Flare is definitely the more preferred move, but at the same time, he is able to recover somewhat after, of course, this is damage I put due to Giga Ray alone. And I wonder whether or not Outrage or Dragon Claw would not have been the superior uh, move for Matt to use here, since, of course, it would have been 100% accurate and actually done more due to Stab in mind. But, you know, that's the game we play in the Dalmat of Fire Fang. It's not a bad option, but it's definitely worth keeping in mind. Uh, so anyway, Brikovsky is going to come in with, of course, a Kecleon. Kecleon back on at it, and um, Kecleon is freaking great against Shaman, actually. 
But of course, it doesn't have seat flare, means you can actually go freely here for a knockoff or, of course, a fake out. So, Monster Mon, of course, Beware comes in, takes a knockoff, and a protein knockoff against, of course, a bulky Beware with Fluffy does nothing. It does nothing. It is freaking amazing how well it took that hit, as he's gonna, of course, be forced to switch out. Going to, of course, Z Wub, but we, of course, Weezing, as, of course, Josh go directly for a superpower, uh, not of nice for a turn. And it actually does fair amount of damage to, of course, um, Weezing. Should be said, though, that due to actually, of course, Weezing now having C moves, such as, of course, C Stockpile or C Memento, it is able to become quite threatening to deal with. So Josh can switch out going directly to, of course, the LBG, being, of course, the Lecta Bus, which is a very nice check here as actually Matt going for a double, going back to Kecleon, which is awesome. Very, very good play on his side because defensively, Kecleon deals, but of course, like the bus really, really nicely. As Focus Blast gonna connect, it does roughly 50% here, a bit over even, but the knockoff here will kind of ensure that no defense are left on the Electa bus, which is definitely not a good thing. And uh, he can easily now go, of course, from um, such a move, such a course, Shadow Sneak, to be able to go become a Ghost Type and not being able to be hit by, of course, any kind of. Um, Fighting moves such as, of course, the Focus Blast itself. So, Mad Optimized to do that is a very, very strong play. And it gets, of course, some extra seal damage on Electa Bus, which, of course, no longer, of course, bulky. But Josh City is coming and goes for the Volt Switch, getting out of there, which is really, really well done of him. As, of course, the Monsamon gonna come back, you know, of course, to Beware. Because it seems every time Beware comes, Matt is in trouble because this tech nest to get it with, of course, offensive capabilities just makes Beware that much scarier. And of course, here comes Ice Punch, which of course will annihilate the Kecleon. Hell, at this point, anything does, I'm pretty sure about that. And of course, Kecleon will fall. It's unfortunate, because I like Kecleon in this matchup, but um, at the same time, something had to go. And uh, I do believe hard switching into, of course, the likes of Volcanion was definitely a tough play to make. So I, I, I do believe he did the right call, as uh, we now have a matchup that is Volcanion versus Latios. Latias say that wrong every time so anyway it's very very clear here which Pokemon does what and uh, there is really nothing that Matt can do he cannot switch in anything here whatsoever he can just kind of go for the extra residual damage because the only monster he has left at this point is Volcanion and let's see Volcanion, Weezing, Excadrill and Alucha so it's not a good situation to be it. He's, so he's definitely going more for the, actually trying to take the Latios down instead. Latias doing this every time. <laughs> anyway, uh, and just take the opportunity to try to whittle that thing down. As of course Josh has the Earthquake, it will mean that eventually he will win this matchup. He would have done that anyway, but Earthquake definitely speeds that process up. As Matt's gonna just spam, of course, C Rupture. Hoping for, of course, getting the bird, and boom, there it is. <laughs> That's why you have Steam Eruption. Steam Eruption is called, you know, even though the bird has been nerfed, it is still residual damage, so the residual damage here will definitely ensure that the leftovers is cancelled out, so that's not a bad option, actually. As um, Josh here, of course, showcased that he does have recover, and is able to actually get himself in a better, sweeter spot here than it was before. As he's gonna, of course, keep going for the steam eruptions. And, I mean, it, it does damage. It's not that, but it's definitely, like, steadily clear. You just know him, don't have any way of getting out of this situation. And had, of course, the Ladias been, of course, the setup set with Call Mine, things might have gotten scarier from here. But we still have a few turns to go. But it's definitely clear that Josh, due to his defensive plays, has offensive momentum at the moment, which is really, really exciting to see. That the series of defensive plays really can put you in the edge and giving you a big advantage. So, um, here comes actually Excadrill. Now, Excadrill is very, very, very exciting. He is also the answer, as Matt has named him. And as, of course, um, uh, Josh can switch out trying to see what it is. He's actually going to sack a God Toad, or at least try to take the Earth or Incoming Iron Head or Earthquake. We will actually see that he's gonna go for C Sandstorm, which boosts, of course, his um, his speed by one. But not only that, and this is definitely the, mo the thing that is the most exciting, he's actually Sand Force, which means he's plus one speed, and now has a 33% boost in, of course, his uh, 
offensive moves. And that means that Earthquake will now kill. And that's pretty darn exciting because it's basically a life for um, life race control now at plus one speed. That's not something you deal with that easy. And it's a very, very cool play. Though, Mon's amount of cards to beware is gonna come in. It's the only Mon that could possibly take this hit. So Earthquake's gonna connect. It's whether or not it can take this hit or if x real just squeaked from here on out. It does survive, which is really, really, really nicely. And Superpower will, of course, end the terror that is the x -Kadrill. And this could have actually got really, really, really ugly. Definitely a superb play from Matt. But Josh's defensive sets really, really showcase that he's ready for anything. And um, does manage to cancel out a possible sweeper. It's a very, very good play on Josh. And yeah, that was just overall exciting. So anyway, see what Weezing comes in here. And um, he's actually going to go for a facade here. Not having a return, which is something I didn't think of at the time. Uh, so here comes a stockpile and the sandstorm will KO beware, which means that x will actually get that kill. Which is kind of cool. I mean, get, definitely get his revenge on the beware. Uh, losing beware is kind of unfortunate, but at the same time it has done its job to some extent. Uh, definitely, of course, cancelling out the possible speed from the x -Kadrill. And um, here, of course, comes Latios. Now we're in a situation which, whether or not if Josh can sweep or wrap up from this situation because he only has Weezing and Hawalucha left and Lazio should definitely be more than well rounded to be able to KO both with of course a Psychic as of course Psychic kills the Seawob I just hope I say that right, I wonder uh, <laughs> So anyway, last Pokemon here from of course Matt's side is the Hawalucha and um, yeah, I mean it looks like the game is done I mean the, the key of course, the key sweep is already over, as you guys already have seen. But Hersey Hawkins, the Haulucha, has one more trick up its sleeve, and that is the Unburdened Sky Attack. And when I say Unburdened, I mean, of course, it's a power hub, which means that... I really can't stress this enough. Latios will die, and we're now in a situation with whether or not any of Josh Pokemon are able to KO Haulucha. Because it outspeed everything on his team right now. There is no Pokemon that can, of course, deal with it. And he's going to bring Regina, which, of course, being the Needle Queen, um, which I really, really was hoping that it was Black Sludge, because Acrobatics does pretty much exactly 50%. And here comes, of course, the Ice Punch. And it's not enough to KO. And it's not Black Sludge, which means the Acrobatics that follows are a KO, sadly. And I say sadly, because had it been Black Sludge, he would have tipped the tilt, or tipped the edge there, which would have helped Josh quite a lot there. Um, so LBG is going to come in, which of course is just um, pretty much sackable at this point. And uh, x Scissor is definitely going to KO. So the last Pokemon is Shaman, and if Shaman has Seed Flear or Air Slash or anything, and can survive an Acrobatics because it's a defensive set, then of course Josh wins the game no matter what. Fiora, of course, the Shaman is in good range, so he definitely will survive an Acrobatics due to not an SD behind him. But, we sadly do find out here that Giga Drain and Earth Power is probably his combination of moves, and Giga Drain is not enough to KO. And it is so unfortunate, because I do believe, even though Matt plays a really, really good game, it's a lot of good strats going on, and will actually win the game due to it. It's very clear that Josh had every defensive response he needed to, but eventually the game took its toll and it came in the very, very last turns. And it's so unfortunate. And of course, Quebec City Beatrix win this game 1 0. Very, very well deserved, though. So, yeah, that's the game. Um, yeah, what can I say? Um, as, as I said in, in the under, I definitely, definitely envy Josh overall defensive plays throughout this game. He definitely gets Matt's plays one-on-one -on -one just right. And it's very, very exciting to see that Josh just keeps the momentum. And he plays defensively and still has offensive momentum to turn up the turn. Uh, the extra real situation definitely got really, really scary. And um, I was actually looking back to this game whether or not he could have solved this issue. And he has a few things. Of course, you know, Shaman not being, of course, the um, Seed Flare. I do believe it matters uh, a lot, actually. But uh, he optimized for Giga Drain, and we really, really can't go about that. I mean, if you play defensively, you'd kind of want the recovery. So I get that. But that was that would have been a decisive factor. Same thing with, of course, Sky Attack. Had he switched in Electa Bus, knowing a Sky Attack would have come, um, Larios would have been able to actually take any Acrobatics or even an Exister. It would not have been a KO from that range. 
But saying these things, I mean, he could very well, if he switched out, gone from SD or last ditch second. So, I do agree what Josh is doing. Uh, I definitely believe he he tried his very best here. And uh, eventually, the defensive sets that he was so abrupt of bringing, of course, bringing, of course, an offensive into Queen or a defensive one, made actually, of course, bite him in the ass. Uh, that said, Matt plays this game really well. I mean, he has two possible sweep situation. He's definitely is trying to break through and eventually did, but damn, it took his whole team to pull that off. He did it with his last Pokemon. He broke through eventually. So Josh, very, very good game. It's a very, very good, incredible game from both sides, but definitely envy Josh being able to maintain himself so healthy throughout this Matt or against Matt. But Matt just eventually broke through and my God, he definitely tried the whole game to pull that off. So good game on both of you. And I hope you guys have been watching and enjoyed this video because this is definitely what I believe the best game so far in the VPL because they were very, very well balanced player and I think they did everything a game can kind of require. So good job on both guys and thank you so much for of course showcasing this. And for everybody that's been watching, thank you for doing just so and I'll see you in the next VPL battle. Until then, of course, take care. Bye.